And the central bank uh, governor, Godwin Mefele, has revealed that about one trillion naira in soon-to-be-replaced notes has been received through the banking system to be swapped for new notes, which becomes effective January 31st, 2023. The governor of the central bank made this revelation in Daurak at Sinha State while briefing journalists after he met with President Muhammadu Buhari. Visiting Daura to s greet Mr. President and also see him uh, as part of um, a normal briefing that I normally um, carry out. Um, the briefing has been overdue and I thought that um, um, he should be briefed about what is happening in Central Bank, what is happening in the economy and re generally recent happenings in the Central Bank of Nigeria and the Nigerian economy. What is the reason happening? <laughs> you know, there are so many things happening. Uh, of course, issues bordering on the new currency and um, the fact that um, only yesterday the currencies, the new currency has now reached the banks and that we expect that the banks will begin to, um, to distribute those currencies to the members of the public who are their customers. And... Um, Primarily to, to assure the president that things are going on well about the currency, as well as issues bordering on um, um, uh, the cashless uh, policy that uh, we recently introduced. The Senate of the Federal Republic is National Assembly. They are a legislative arm of the government, and from time to time, um, we brief them about what is happening, um, about our policies, and um, I'm aware that um, they have asked for some briefings and we will brief them. But I think it's important for me to say that the cashless policy started in 2012, okay? But at <clears throat> almost three to four occasions, we've had to step down the policy because we felt that there is a need for us to prepare ourselves and, and, um, and deepen our payment system infrastructure in Nigeria. Between 2012 and now 2022, almost or about 10 years, we believe that a lot of electronic channels have been put in place that would aid people um, in making banking, conducting banking and financial services transactions in Nigeria. Um, we've heard about people talking about uh, some, of, some of the people in our rural areas. And the truth is that um, even online banking, as I was coming out to Dara, I saw a kiosk that has super agents today. The, because of the way we felt that there is a need for us to deepen payment system infrastructure, we have 1.4 million super agents that are in all over the country, different parts of the country, all local governments, all villages in this country. And I have told my colleagues, I'm sure some of their names are already on the CBN website, and we will publish all the names of all the super agents. And to put issues concerning the new policy in perspective, we we'll have a RISE News analyst, Professor Sam Ahmadi and Frank Tieti. Gentlemen, very warm welcome. Maybe um, let's start uh, with uh, Sam Ahmadi, who's mm. here in uh, our studios, and Tieti in the offside studio. Sam, you've heard the, the governor of the central bank uh, reassuring the public again that, hey, look, this policy is 10 years old and it just might be subject to review. But for now, mm -hmm. the policy stays. No going back. And he has the backing of Mr. President. Sam? Well, I think you're uh, right that the policy has been uh, you know, up to 10 years in the making. But again, the policy and the items are different. The cash policy uh, it, it may be done in many ways. And the, the timing, the, the processes, are different. Clearly, um, the governor has exercised their power, the power of the central bank under the Central Bank Act, uh, Section 2, Section 6, and all that uh, gives them power, Section 7. But the qu question is, um, the National Assembly has also the right to ask that they come. What I think is probably inappropriate at this point is say stop. Look, this policy would, is not going to take effect today. So if they invite them to come on, on the 15th, they probably should not say 
uh, order them to stop the policy. They should say, come and explain. The legislative do power... They, do they have that legislative power to so do? Does yeah, the yeah. legislature yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, um, assume executive power? No, no, no. The legislature has power now from Section 8 to 84. Mm. It's part of the oversight function. And by the way, the Central Bank is a creation of the Central Bank Act, an act of the National Assembly. So the National Assembly is the one who delegates powers of the executive under uh, monetary policy to the central bank. It does not mean that the National Assembly can dictate to the central bank what to do. The central bank is an independent bank. The amendment tries to secure independence. Once the central bank board, for example, what the National Assembly can, be do, can do in that hearing is to find out whether this policy passed through the board. Uh, being a, a form of monetary policy, a supplementary monetary policy, uh, if you look at section 12, of the act, it talks about the Monetary Policy Committee of the Central Bank. Part of what they do is to make policy on monetary policy as well as, you know, um, credit policy. So the Central Bank, mm -hmm. the legislature need to find out, has this gone to due process? And if they are satisfied, it's gone to due process. Uh, that means the, the board or the MPC approve this policy, therefore they can be implemented legally. Again, they can look at it and say, the rationale and the impact of these policies will not be acceptable. They can do two things. They can use lawmaking to either mitigate those impacts, they can make fresh laws to cut back or undermine even the policy. So the, the way it's structured, I think there's a failure to understand how government works, okay? First is that the National Assembly always have the right to do oversight, mm -hmm. to find that information for future lawmaking, for clarifying. And also because it, it, to control the financing of the, national, of, the, of the central bank. But it has no powers to dictate monetary policy or even ancillary policy that supports monetary policy to the bank. So All the right. bank can say, we don't care. This mm -hmm. is the right policy. But they can go back and make laws to either deal with the, the consequences or even undermine that framework. They have All the right. powers. Yeah. Let's bring in Frank Tete. Thankfully, both of you are lawyers, so it would be nice to get, you know, maybe opposing uh, sides of this legal issue. Like they say, <laughs> the law is an, uh, ass. an ass, right? It's not an ass. <laughs> okay, so uh, Frank, how much weight really does this, uh, you know, House of Reps order carry asking the central bank uh, to desist uh, forthwith uh, with this limit on, uh, you know, cash withdrawals? How much weight does it really have? <laughs> and what are really are your concerns about this uh, new policy, if you have any? I do have concerns. And the concerns are that um, the central bank, first and foremost, the central bank appears to be out of touch with the reality of what the people want. And that's a problem. Uh, the central bank appears to be operating with textbook uh, monetary and economic uh, policies, forget, which are largely imported and uh, which are most likely inapplicable to our local circumstances. But I'd like to go back to the question you asked first, whether the National Assembly does have powers to stop the central bank from going ahead with issuing uh, policies that are out of sync with what uh, the Nigerian people want, policies that will foist uh, you know, untold hardship on the people, change our way of life, uh, and then also uh, allow negative forces like terrorism, uh, corruption, and all those things to now influence and take away our fundamental rights to own and control our property, which is the money. Uh, you know, so first, by the, by the provisions of the CVN Act, sadly, the National Assembly does not have such powers to stop the Central Bank of Nigeria. Uh, if you look at the acts closely, the Central Bank's budget is made by the board of the Central Bank that, it, that is made up of the governor and the deputy governors with some nominees of the federal government. How can the National Assembly of Nigeria create a gargantuan Frankenstein in the, in, in the like of a central bank that is above it that it cannot control? If the central bank does not owe the National Assembly to uh, anything, but to occasionally, uh, periodically brief the National Assembly as to what it's doing. And it even has more, uh, you know, responsibility to the president. It may give reports to the president and, so, and then not submit its budget to the president, but to tell the president about how it is performing with his own budget. So the central bank is on its own, independent. The National Assembly should have learned from the days, the, the rambunctious days of uh, Sanusi, Sanusi Lamido Sanusi, when he changed the landscape of banking in Nigeria. And the National Assembly was lame 
was helpless, even though they didn't like what was going on. They should, by now, we have bended the CBN Act to exercise more control. Let me tell you something. Section 14 of this, of the Nigerian Constitution, places the ultimate power, sovereignty, in the hands of the Nigerian people. So does the central bank weigh what he's doing to, to mean that the Nigerian people want it? The Nigerian people in this republic are represented by the National Assembly. We often ridicule the National Assembly thinking that uh, we, we're making fun of them, whereas they represent the 200 million plus people. Yet they cannot at the time just feel, just measure with a, barometer, a political barometer and say this policy, however sound it may be on paper, is not acceptable to our people. You know, but the National Assembly can't do that. That's a very sad thing. Now, going to, going to concerns, let me tell you. you. You see, it is not about an economic policy that will favor Nigeria. It is about the changing of a, 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 an economic culture. Nigeria is a free market economy. We are talking about property here. You want to tell people what to do with their property, how much they want to. Let me tell you about one law. There's a law called the Decimal, the Decimal Currency uh, act in Nigeria that determines the weight of the Nigerian Naira is measured in gold. And you tell me that my property that is that I decide to withdraw and keep it somewhere, no matter how much it is, you want to tell me it's wrong. Have we ever interrogated the cashless policy? Do you know it's about control? You and we often think that control is right. So you want one a group of people who run an institution in government and nigeria is a state not government doesn't necessarily act in the interest of the people government does act in the interest of the here and now now it is about taking control from the people it is about taking control of their own property look if you are afraid of money laundering, if you are afraid of terrorism, right. take a look at the Money Laundering Act. It has already made provisions to tackle those things. But here we are, my own money that I put in the bank. You want to tell me the limits of what I want to collect from it, how, I'm, how I store it, but and you, you think you that it agree, is right? Uh, you do agree, Frank Tieter, that you know, desperate situations do re uh, you know, require no, desperate measures. No, it is not like uh, that. Measures, Despe and that let might me just tell be you, what the central bank is trying to do. Uh, let me tell you, right. desperate situations do not not warrant taking away the fundamental rights and that is the deception nigerian people their powers have been taken away all the time we mess up with the national assembly that represents the people Some just okay. because we okay. say yes, we are in absolutely. desperate times i think some of my issue that Very could wrong. come in here okay. uh, sorry I, I think uh, there are two misconceptions yeah. first not just central bank for example when i was chairman of NEC, the act the national assembly makes an act and says only the next chairman will de de declare tariff National Assembly makes those power, create institutions like Central Bank, and give them that power. The National Assembly cannot sit and make laws by themselves and take those power back. So it's all global. Regulators have powers to make decisions. The Central Bank Board, the Governor, and the MPRC has a right to decide on multiple policy. The second point I want to correct is that, look, these policies do not control and not fundamental right violations. In fact, as a matter of fact, really, globally, monetary policies are taken out of what you call populism, because they ha is what you call counter majoritarian principles. Just like the Supreme Court, for example. This court decides issues. Why don't we ask the, the constitution to be subject to legislative oversight? The idea of a regulatory state is that certain policies, otherwise, for example, if it becomes the National Assembly can vote in money, increase money supply to win election, and then damn the consequences downstream will be dangerous. So the law wisely says appoint credible people. Give them this responsibility to make decisions based on technical facts, based on science, not mm. based on populism. And that's why, if you don't like them, you impeach them to go to the National Assembly, two third vote, they impeach them at that point. So uh, I don't uh, think okay. it's a violation of human rights uh, and it's not, it's, it's a standard practice globally to secure monetary policy from uh, all political All right, gentlemen, uh, uh, wish we have uh, more Thank time you. to continue this conversation, but it's inexhaustible anyway. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, it's, it's an ongoing, ongoing conversation. Absolutely. But let's thank uh, Frank Thiete in our outside studio, a rise analyst, and uh, Professor Sam Amadi, another rise analyst here mm -hmm. in our studio.